All right, everyone, today we're back to talk about two reasons, not three, not one, two reasons why you should not be supplementing with a zinc supplement. But before we do, don't forget to like this video, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification button so you get notified when we post a new video every week. So let's get into it. We have to ask ourselves, does the supplement form of anything do the same thing as the mineral or the vitamin or the nutrient found in nature? Survey says eh, it doesn't. And we know this with zinc and many other supplements like calcium, you know, synthetic uh, retinol palmitate, which is vitamin A and so forth. Now we know zinc is really important when it comes to our physiology and biochemistry. It's important for carbohydrate metabolism, fertility, growth development, hydrochloric acid production, hormonal production, and the list goes on. So we know it's needed and we know it's important. The problem is, I feel like two things are happening in our society. Well, I don't feel like they are, I know they are. And they are, number one, we have lost complete faith in our bodies. We have completely lost faith, number two, in what our body is capable of. Or I should say, number three, we have completely lost faith in nature because everything we need is right in front of us. We are just too lazy to see it and we love to overcomplicate things, right? So when it comes down to zinc supplementation, why should you not be taking it? Okay, number one, when we take a zinc supplement, we disrupt copper metabolism. We affect how copper is converted into bioavailable forming ceruloplasmin. We affect how or ceruloplasmin is actually used to activate oxygen in the cell to produce energy. And when this happens, many bad things are happening because now we're not producing all these copperous antioxidants right? Cytochrome oxidase, cytochrome oxidase, superoxide dismutase, the list goes on. These are the things that allow you to thrive and create this antioxidant rich environment that create this healing environment that put money in the bank. And that's what you want. This is a state that allows you to feed your cells through this feedback loop, produce more mitochondria and become more metabolic. This is the state you want to be in. Right, but if you can't convert copper, you can't convert, you can't store it. We have a problem because now that energy production, the money in the bank is gone, and now you start producing stress or oxidative stress, and the cycle essentially pushes you down the line into calcification. That is the end stage. Think of it like exhaust, rust. We don't want to be in that place, and it's really simple. Anytime you see bioavailable copper go down, you're going to see iron in the tissues go up. Why? It's very simple. We'll do a video on this. It's because iron recycling, the RES system, the reticuloendothelial system is copper dependent, whether it's in the enterocyte in the gut, hepatocyte in the liver, red blood cells, spleen, etc. You have enzymes like a fastin, peroxidase, ferroportin, that are copper dependent and without that, you can't get iron from let's say the gut into the blood. You can't get the UPS packages from the factory out to the trucks so they can drive on the road because you don't have copper. Those enzymes are copper dependent. So what happens is the doctors go, oh, you have low iron in your blood. They're like this, you have low iron in your blood. But guess what? They're not looking at the other end of the seesaw and you have high tissue iron because you're not storing or converting or using copper because of the zinc you're taking. So you get diagnosed with anemia, but you really don't have anemia. You have iron toxicity in tissues because of low bioavailable copper. So we don't want to take zinc for this reason because it affects in a simple, simple sense. It has a negative effect in copper metabolism. Secondly, Research, research has shown that zinc supplementation, number one, because it's synthetic, and number two, because we're getting such huge doses that we don't need, it stimulates the liver, right, to, to produce a protein called metallothionine, 
Well, metallothionine will bind copper a thousand times more than zinc. We bind copper, what happens? Bye-bye copper, bye-bye activated oxygen. We create hypoxia at the cell. We produce exhaust, we produce exhaustative, exhaust, oxidative stress, we increase calcification, and at the same time, yes, we create methylation issues because methylation is copper dependent. We create histamine issues because DAO enzyme is copper dependent. We create iron issues because the RES reticuloendothelial system is copper dependent. So we're creating more stress and more stress and more stress. And we have to ask ourselves, hmm, what is very prevalent in our society today? MTHFR, anemia and histamine issues. But we love to blame the food. We love to blame genetics. We love to blame our blood. Right? And one little mineral, iron, that doesn't even regulate iron. Instead of taking a step back and saying, what am I taking or what am I doing? And taking responsibility for my health and saying, hmm, it's actually the system and I'm the one that's perpetuating it. I'm the one that's affecting the environment so I can't function properly. So you're probably asking, well, if we need it and it's so important, where do we get it? It's really simple. If we step away and say, what am I? I'm human. What do I need every day to thrive? While emotionally, we need to be seen, heard, held, acknowledged, and responded to appropriately. Physically, we need food, water, and air. That's it. We can live without a house. Of course, we're not going to, but in a simple sense, that's what we need to thrive. That is your foundation. And if you're not focusing on those pieces, and you're focusing on detoxes, cleanse, and supplements, you're missing the boat. And it's the reason you're really having a hard time healing. Because if we go back to nature... We understand nature and we have faith in nature. We are nature and say, where are we going to get zinc in nature? Oh, shellfish, oysters. What am I eating every day? Chicken and eggs. This is what everyone eats. But we have to start eating the foods that are superfoods, not kale and seeds. The superfoods are the foods we're all afraid of. We're creating diets because of these foods. We're afraid of them which are fruits and roots and squashes, right? Which is dairy, fatty fish, white fish and shellfish and organ meats, all these proteins. So we can get these minerals and get the zinc that we need. And guess what? You don't even need that much. You can eat probably anywhere from two to five oysters a week and get your RDA that you need every single week. And you don't need any more. You don't have to overdo it. More is not better. So take a step back, think about what you're doing, and saying, am I creating a foundation for healing? Am I focusing on all the wrong things? And am I maybe taking supplements that are actually blocking me from healing and going where I need to go? So hopefully that this makes sense to you. If you got questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. Hope it help. <laughs> maybe some of you are tossing that zinc in the barrel, going to buy some fresh oysters, canned oysters. If you are, kudos, organ meats, even better. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out.